Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge YouTube channel. This clip was brought to my attention by the R Peloton subreddit asking for my opinion on an event that happened during the Tour of Columbia Stage 4 road race that's happening at the moment. So during the stage, Movistar riders came across this man and we'll run it through as we normally do. We'll run it through in full speed, do and break it down and see what the riders could have done differently, what they could have done better in slow motion and chop it up. But yeah, in this video, we're going to look at what this local labourer could have done differently whilst participating in the Tour Columbia race and maybe some of the ongoing issues that are happening at Movistar, despite the reset in their personnel in the 2020 season and getting some young guys in. So watching it back, let's take a look at the lay of the land. We have two Movistar riders, so they have a numerical advantage over this local man on the beater bicycle. He's got some sort of sausage dog cross, stumpy-legged brown dog on his back facing forwards. And in the front basket of his bike, he's carrying some sort of Chihuahua crossbreed. Now, the Chihuahua crossbreed is not going to add a lot of weight, but at altitude, over 2,500 meters high altitude where this is, every extra kilogram matters. And not only is this man carrying two dogs and a backpack on a beta bicycle, we can see right now he's also taking a selfie with his left hand with one hand on the bars. The Movistar rider is taking a photo with his left hand as well. And I think this is indicative of the different KPIs that are being applied to World Tour cyclists now. It's not just winning races that's important. You need to maintain very active social media presence. Look at the Education First riders. And apparently whilst texting during a race, carrying two dogs and a heavy backpack on a 20 kilogram bicycle, this rider also managed, managed to slip his phone back into his pocket. It must have had a zip, otherwise surely the phone would have fallen out. We can also see on the top there the Movistar riders. This is something I've touched on in previous videos. I think there's some aerodynamics issues at Movistar right now. You can see how large the CDA is, the frontal area is of that Movistar rider. Obviously, they did the time trials in Colombia and Belta a San Juan on non-aero climbing canyon frames rather than aero frames. I remember when Nelson Oliveira lost to Remco in that Belta a San Juan trial. That would have made a few seconds difference not having the right frame. And I think perhaps we're also seeing, I know Movistar have done this reset, an indication of the lack of communication that's still within the team. You see the other rider coming from, the, from behind. It's not clear what their strategy was here, whether they were going to attack, use their numerical advantage to attack two on one, and they come up on the side of each other. But to me, from an outsider's perspective, it still looks like Nzue has a fair bit of work to do to clear things up in that team. You can see, obviously, that the Chihuahua sitting in the basket was not too concerned about those Movistar riders and the threat they posed. And apparently, the local rider said to the Movistar guys, you either stay with me or I'll leave you behind. I think if it wasn't for some of the aerodynamics issues with the second dog on his back, which we'll get to in a second with some freeze frames, you can see, obviously, his cadence is excellent but you see the aerodynamics issues with this dog and i've spoken about this before a lot of riders were posting photos about their new tt positions from the off season and it's all well and good going to the wind tunnel paying for a lot of expensive testing getting a position with a really low cda but if you can't maintain that position it doesn't really matter and you can see here that the dash room crossbreed sort of dog on his back is really widening his frontal area he's not got a snout facing forward which is a much more aero position he's widening that area and really he needs to be tucked in lower on that rider's back i would suggest that some sort of papoose would be an optimal setup for him to carry that dog on his back to enable them to maintain a better aerodynamic position and apparently the dog on the front in the front basket he's actually the, the ds for this local rider and maybe we'll see look how good his cadence is here maybe we'll see nicola portal and we'll have ineos tomorrow in tour columbia because they actually had some communication issues at the end of stage four maybe overnight they'll get some welders in and put a sidecar on the Pinarello Dogma F12s and Nicola Portal will sit there with goggles and talk to Richard Carapaz and Egan Banal during the stage five tomorrow. Regardless, the local rider, he made the correct decision where he didn't want to set the pace on the front, so he went behind the Movistar train here. I'm not sure if there's a right to left crosswind just from the way they're panning out. Unfortunately, the footage cuts out at this point from the broadcast motorbike, so I'm not sure what actually happened on GC at the end of stage four Columbia. But even from this limited clip, we can see there are important takeaways and learnings from these early season races for what may happen later in the season. But I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. Like it down below if you did Comment down below any thoughts you had on the clip. Consider joining channel membership if you want to support the channel. Thank you to Max Biankowski, Chris Noonan, and Saproj for supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. As always, check out my Instagram, at The Lantern Rouge. I post there almost every day, and I'll see you later. Ciao.